<laughs> God will save a baby. If a baby dies, any baby, I don't believe that they go to hell. I don't believe that there is a such thing as a baby in hell. They haven't reached the age of accountability. But this guy, this nut, says that is why God can save a baby. This guy doesn't know, he doesn't know any more than a Catholic. He doesn't know any more than a heathen, any more than a dog walking around. Well, I don't really know for sure if I'm going to go to heaven. Well, you know, you're supposed to know. I'll finish up here. It says, in God's mysterious providence, he gives spiritual ears to the elect. Yeah. In their obedience, they are praying for God's mercy. They are patiently waiting upon God, hoping that they too might become saved. In their desire to be obedient, they are at least in an environment, the Bible, wherein God will save them if God so desires. If God desires, God will save him if he desires. What about the thing of God's not willing that any should perish? You know, the grace of God which bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. This guy's a nut. Today in his great and wonderful mercy, God is saving a great multitude of people. It is possible, therefore, that as any one of us humbly pleads for mercy, if we are not already saved, we might be one of those included in that great multitude which no man could number. The big question is, are you humbly begging God for salvation? May God have mercy on each one of us. Again, both pages 68 and 69 of his salvation message, the name Jesus Christ doesn't appear once. Not once. This man is not preaching Jesus Christ to a lost world. He is preaching a heretical, damnable heresy. Harold Camping is a lost false prophet. If you're one of his followers, you better run away from that devil as quick as you can. One more place in the Bible, then we're done for today. John chapter 10. And I don't know if you've ever heard Harold Camping speak, but it's this monotone, groaning, low voice that he just talks just like that and he just reads from the Bible and just... Oh, I can't listen to the guy. I can't listen to that man for more than about two minutes without feeling sick in my stomach. And a lot of these, you know, there are, I'm sorry, and this might get me in trouble, but whatever. There are a lot of false prophets on sermon audio. And a couple of times I've clicked on sermons just trying to listen. I can't listen to them. Something about their voice. It's interesting. We're going to see why that is here in John chapter 10. There's just something about the voice of a false prophet that is a Christian, it should be repulsive to you. It should just be like, ah, man, shut that guy off. That's how we should feel. John chapter 10, verse 1. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. Hmm, very interesting. Verse 4, And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. They didn't understand. Jesus is not talking here about the second coming. He's talking about the rapture. That's why they didn't understand. That's why Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, Behold, I show you a mystery. It was a mystery. Okay, verse 7. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. He identifies what the door is. Verse 8. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Jesus says, by me is salvation. The Bible says that there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. If anybody comes to you and is preaching salvation and they don't name the name of Jesus, they're a false prophet. Run away from them. Don't listen to them. Okay, verse 10. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. 
I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is an hireling, and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep, and fleeth, and the wolf catcheth them, and scattereth the sheep. You know what's amazing to me? How many Christians that I get letters from, emails from, and they say, I can't find a good church. There aren't any good churches in this area. None of them want to talk about the evil. None of them want to talk about the issues of the day. It's all this Laodicean, sissy, lukewarm nonsense. You know why? Because those preachers are career preachers. They're hirelings. They don't have any real love for the sheep. They're up there. They want to make money. And one of the prime issues of making money is the customer is always right. You do things to please the customer. Nobody ever went into a business, started a business, and did things that were negative. <laughs> okay? <laughs> you don't beat up on your customers because they won't come back. But as a preacher, you're not to beat up on them, on your people as, as, as a pastor, but you are to warn them, to reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. It's right there. But we have hirelings right now. Verse 13. The hireling fleeth because he is an hireling and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. You should know that you are saved. If you don't know, get it worked out. Okay? You should know. If you don't know, the Bible says that you're a reprobate. Okay? It should be there. And if you are going to a church where you have an hireling as a pastor, if you are going to an incorporated, government-incorporated church, you know, I, I've said some things this morning about politicians and, and political things and the Illuminati and whatever else. You know why I can do that? Because I'm a free man. Bible Believers Fellowship is not a government corporation. Bible Believers Fellowship does not exist as a money-making entity. I'm not in this as a career that I'll eventually retire from and go vacation in Bermuda. Okay, I'm going to stick with this thing. I'm not a hireling. Okay, I want to point people to Jesus Christ. I got called by some wicked false prophet this week. He called me Jim Jones. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Jim Jones controlled people. He said at one point, Jim Jones raised up the Bible and he said, you don't need this book. And he threw it out into the congregation and he said, if you need a Savior, I will be your Savior. If you need a God, I will be your God. Now, you're never going to hear me say that, okay? And I'm never going to tell people to drink Kool-Aid and commit suicide, <laughs> you know? I mean, give me a break. But see, that's how a, a wicked, lost person will view somebody who's King James only. They view me as a cult leader. I'm not a cult leader. Give me a break, you know? But that's what you have right there. A hireling will not warn people about things that are coming. Hey, I, you know, I'd love to talk sometime about the nice little stories of the Bible and let's talk about um, blind Bartimaeus or, you know, let's talk about uh, Zacchaeus was a le wee little man and let's tell neat little stories and applications for life and, you know, how to get along. But I can't, I can't break away from the fact that we are living in the last days and things are getting worse and worse and worse. And for me to talk about something to talk about pretty nice little subjects while there's major problems and the sheep are going, what's going on? Does this line up with the Bible? For me to, to not talk about what's going on, I can't do it. You know, and a lot of a lot of people aren't going to want to listen to this just simply because it's negative. But I'll tell you right now, if you're a Christian, if you're saved, you know that this is actually positive. All this stuff I was talking about this morning because it proves Bible prophecy. We have been given a more sure word of prophecy. And if the prophecy is right, then we can know also that salvation is right. It all goes hand in hand. It all ties together. So, I guess that's it for this morning. Listen to the voice of Jesus. And, and let me just tell you something. I believe very strongly in the power of the Holy Spirit. power of the Holy Ghost, if you want to say that. I don't believe in sign gifts. But I do believe that the Lord will speak to you about certain things. And one of the ways that He will speak to you is when you hear the voice of an hireling, something within you 
And it's not an explainable thing. It's not an audible voice that talks to you. But something within you will go, ugh. <coughs> that voice, it'll just, something will irritate you. And you'll just be like, oh, man, I don't want to hear that. The Bible says, and we went over this in First Thessalonians chapter 5, quench not the spirit. If you hear a voice from a preacher, quote unquote, and it's it's irritating and grating and just like, ah, oh, I don't want to listen to this guy. If you hear that, don't quench the spirit. Shut him off. Don't listen to it. Just say, you're a hireling. I don't want anything to do with you. And by the way, Harold Camping, one of his motivations here, he's saying, the rapture's coming. So what's the purpose of you having a big bank account? Send me your money. And some guy, you know, brother on YouTube, made a video and he said uh, to Harold Camping, he said, you're a very rich man. And he said, so you believe the rapture is coming May 21st? Why don't you send me some money? Instead of asking for money, why don't you give all your money away? Isn't that weird? Harold Camping's not giving up all of his riches. He's telling other people to give up their riches. You know why? Because he's a hireling. You hear that voice? The Holy Spirit will show you a false prophet. You won't be able to listen to them. Don't quench the spirit and say, I'm just going to keep listening. Don't do that. Yeah. So I guess that's it for this morning. Stay in the Word of God. I'm telling you, that's, that's the best way to not be deceived. Spend your time in this book. Listen to it. Read it, study it, and watch out for the false prophets and the hirelings. Uh, one other point uh, that was brought up here quick, and I just want to include this into the sermon, is that the thing of the, an irritating voice doesn't necessarily mean, you know, you get some Baptists that have kind of a, a, an abrasive way to them. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a false prophet, okay? Uh, the Bible talks about a a false prophet having coming to you in good words and fair speech and deceiving the hearts of the simple. That's uh, Romans 16, is it? Yes, we're all yeah. I'm getting it here. Um, but uh, they will deceive. What's the point of them using good words and fair speech? It's to get your money. That's a hireling. okay? But even with a hireling with good words and fair speech, it says that they deceive the hearts of the simple. Okay, if you're wise, you're not going to be deceived as quickly by them. A hireling that's in it for the money, they will have an irritating voice, but even kind of an effeminate voice and good words and fair speech. And if and you can tell, a lot of these guys, you can tell they will build you up to a point where they try to sell you something. You know, you take a Benny Hinn or a John Hagee or people like that. They build you up and they tell you just got to have this latest book. Okay, what was what was the verse? Uh, Romans sixteen eighteen. It says, "For they that are such serve not the Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple." Yeah. That's Romans sixteen eighteen. Yeah, very good. Yeah, very good point. And um, that's you know I wanted to include that in here as an important final point that it isn't just a, an irritating abrasive voice. It can be a good words and fair speeches. If you see them building you up to a point where they start trying to get your money, look out. <laughs> okay, that's also the voice of an hireling. So that's something that's important to keep in mind. Thank you for listening.